This is Minute Mask Tip 6 of 10 with Jeremy Schuback. This one's a fun one. Let's say that you have a mask that you're rather proud of, something like this, and you have a few areas that you want to get rid of. For instance, you have this pole right here and you want to get rid of it. So I could go into the mask and then kind of, oops, X, brush along the parts that I don't want, undo this, and then if I look at this, let's look in the mask, we can see this isn't good. So like normal, with the brush, I'm just going to hit X and kind of bring things back in and bring things back out. But the issue that we're running into is this is kind of a very subtle mask. And working in it with completely white or completely black ends, uh, ends with us running into issues. Even if I were to bring down the brush opacity just by hitting five right there and work on it that way, we're still running into issues where suddenly it starts to get soupy right here. And this is a perfect instance for when it's good to nest masks inside of each other. So I'm going to undo a few times and get back to when we have the image. Rather than working on the mask itself, what I'll sometimes do in instances like this is put this into a group just by hitting Command G, close this group, and then put a mask on that group. And now what we can do is we can paint onto the mask of the group rather than painting onto the mask of the layer itself. And this will mean that if we go back and forth, we're never going to lose the fidelity of kind of the subtleties of what was happening before. So we have one mask that just looks like this, and then another mask that looks like this. And because it's nested within each other, they combine to create the full results. So if I were to say make a selection of all of this area and just do it on this top map, so let me just, uh, let me just paint this in, do it on this top mask. There we go. We'll do it over here as well, and then deselect it. Even if I have an issue, if I have a problem with an edge or something like that, I don't need to worry about accidentally going too far and ruining a part of a mask that would be very difficult to get back in the same way, because I'm just doing it on this simple mask above. And the whole trick is you get your complicated mask, and then when you want to move, um, move out major objects, you put it inside of a group and put a mask on that group. This doesn't come up all the time, but when it does come up, it is a incredibly powerful technique that just gives you an additional level of control. If you liked this, please check out and buy my course on how to use masks in powerful ways in Photoshop. I go much, much deeper than this, talking about selecting hair and all sorts of various techniques that take you from being a beginner to being an expert in less than two hours, able to select complicated things like this.